Hi, everybody. It's your friend, Cindy, known as Cynthia Jordan, as the author and a playwright of the musical Pearl, which is all about the Santa Rita number one that came in 100 years ago. We're just days away from the anniversary of when it actually came in. It's a beautiful story of perseverance. And because of the Santa Rita well, Texas has benefited so much. MD Anderson, UT, all of the millions and millions of jobs. A lot of people don't know that because of that discovery, the allies were able to have plenty of fuel in World War II. And the list goes on and on and on. Well, today we actually have the granddaughter of Carl Cromwell and Carl Cromwell is the reason that the well came in because he never gave up. Through all of the hardships, he never gave up. So welcome, Judy. And thank you for having me. Judy Dawson. And let us in on some of the family stories that go with your grandfather. Well, First of all, you need to realize my grandfather died at 41. So I only knew him through stories from my grandmother and my mother. Right. But it was always a, the lore of my childhood about the drilling of the Santa Rita and when the well came in. My grandmother was a school teacher in Anadarko, Oklahoma, and Carl Cromwell had come from Pennsylvania to Texas to drill, and he was drilling in the Oklahoma and the Texas area, and they met and married. And when he had the opportunity to go out to drill what became Santa Rita number one, they went and lived in a shack with a newborn baby who was my mother, Carlene, named after Carl, Carlene. And they lived by the well site for almost two years before the well came in. And when my grandmother would often recount the story of the morning that she's up cooking breakfast and the well comes in, mother was probably a, less than two years old. And she just said, the lala is spilling, meaning the oil, I guess, was coming in on the ground. In any case, it was kind of an exciting time for them. And uh, my grandmother used to laugh about in the oil business, sometimes you're in the chips and sometimes you're not. Oh, and I know that. <laughs> I one of sometimes being in the chips and then my granddad got real in, interested in aviation. Uh -huh. And that's another part of San Angelo's history that he was involved in. And that is the development of the airport there and the ties between getting the equipment to the oil field and the hardships of getting the equipment to the oil field by car or by train and developing the notion of airline service. And that was one of the things that he was involved in in San Angelo. I'll be darn. Well, I heard that the conditions, I mean, anybody who's been to Big Lake, Texas knows that it can, <laughs> I can't imagine living there for two years. And they had a, a tool. It was a drop tool, wasn't it? And it only yeah. made like four feet a day. You're out. <laughs> yeah. And, and my grandmother tells the story of uh, my granddad would hunt in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that for a hundred days in a row, they ate quail. Because that was what he could shoot and bring home. And they would have quail. He loved that. But... Uh, a hundred days of quail would be very difficult. <laughs> oh my gosh. And how big was that shack? Do you know? You know, I really don't know. I've seen pictures of where they lived after that well came in. They still lived out in that area as they, dry up, as they drilled other wells in the same field. Right. And, um, I'm sure it was very, very small and, and, and meager in many, many ways. But my grandmother was a school teacher, well-educated, 
and as was my grandfather. I don't know that he had, I don't know that Carl Cromwell had a lot of schooling, but um, I've seen lots of letters he wrote mm -hmm. and he was very knowledgeable, very well. He, he could write very, very well. And uh, I'm sure it was an interesting experience for them, but not unlike what many people must have faced in the 1920s. Right. I actually read that school teachers were not allowed to be married for a long time because the whole idea of women taking care of children in their house, school teachers, oh, yeah. it was like, you have children to take care of, so you won't have any of your own. You've already got all these children, so they... No, they married late. My grandfather was 31 and my grandmother was 25 when they married. And my mother was born a couple of years later. And so I'm sure it was the case that she had taught for several years and obviously left her position when they married. Oh, isn't that something? Yeah, I did a lot of research on this and your grandfather is a hero. The thing I love so much about this story, Judy, is the little miracles that happened along the way. And to me, that is God affirming that I'm with you. Are you, it's not overnight. You have to understand that everything happens in God's time, but he never gave up. And so they had to have the hole in the ground by a certain time. And they, oh talked, yeah, they talked the train into taking the, the water well equipment to get yeah. a hole in the ground where it, they wanted to drill was too far away. So that's why it's only 185 feet from the tr train track. Right out from the train tracks and that actually turned out to be a blessing in many ways in terms of getting equipment exactly because exactly but i think they drilled at that first prospect later and there wasn't anything there it was right there by the train track yeah. and that developed the community of texon mm -hmm. did they live in texon yes they lived in texon and my mother Probably as late as hmm, maybe the 1990s, maybe the early, probably the the 1990s. My mother would occasionally go back to the Texan reunion. Okay. And uh, she, they had moved from Texan and in that area into San Angelo by the time she started school, which would have been about 1926, 1927 but they lived uh, in the oil fields uh, until that time. He was a very handsome man, your grandfather. Well, he was known as the big Swede <laughs> and his parents had immigrated from Sweden. My grandmother was also partially Swedish. And uh, yes, he was, he was a large man. And uh, we've, within the family, it's the name has been carried on. My brother passed away a couple of years ago and he was named Carl. And I now have a granddaughter named Carlene as my mother was named Carlene. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And, the and, they, and they have an interest in the family history. It's kind of a fun story um, to, to think about the life that they lived and how difficult it was. Yes. And, uh, you know, my grandmother took it for granted. She didn't talk that much about it. I mean, occasionally we'd ask. And now that I'm older, I always think, why didn't I ask more questions? Why didn't I ask more questions? I think <laughs> about that all the time. If I could just have one day with each of my grandmothers and I would have a whole lot of questions because all of my study now is the 1920s and, and the history of the 1920s because it was such a turning point, especially for... Oh, sure for women and what your grandmother endured yeah. a year and a half or yeah. even up. well and, and I think they moved into they the initial they had to get things in the ground in January as I understand it my mother was born in January of 21 which was the oh. month they had to get it in the ground she was born at Shannon Hospital in San Angelo. And I think then they must have moved on to the site 
by March, the way I read the history and understand the history. And we're there then, and it's two almost, you know, it's May of 23 as opposed to March of 21. So they're there for a long time in the middle of nowhere. And they were virtually, yeah, they were virtually kind of by themselves out there. And there wasn't yeah, there, TV or... No, as, my, as I understand, there were two shacks, one that my parents, my grandparents lived in, and one that uh, different workers came and right. went, and they undoubtedly had a, a difficult time taking keeping workers. Yes. But my grandparents still had a lot of affection for a number of people and stayed in touch with a number of people that worked on the wells. No kidding. Yeah. Isn't that something? Because now, today, I had a beautiful interview with Richard Brantley from Midland, Texas. And that whole interview is about because of the Santa Rita number one, what that has done for the state of Texas. Well, it, it I mean, oil generally. Right. And one of the books that I mentioned to you earlier, and I'll hold it up right now. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Okay. And, but it's written by a man named C.K. Stillwagon. And uh -huh. he didn't, he was not there when the Santa Rita came in, but he was the original Thule. Uh -huh. okay. from my grandfather and he then his this book was written about 1945 and he goes through a lot of the history of the oil business in the United States and his conclusion as it's written in 1945 the conclusion is what a difference the oil business has made it opened a whole new era much like someone might talk about a new era opening up now with other forms of energy, but it was a new uh, phenomenon at that time, Isn't certainly. It? Well, the automobile hadn't been invented very long in yeah. 1945. And so the gasoline- But in, in the twenties, when they were at the rigs, um, there's one story about my grandfather that someone had a car that broke down who had driven kind of by Big Lake. Mm -hmm. And the guy was trying to get it repaired. And my grandfather said, let me just buy that car from you. And he supposedly bought the car and made a hunting vehicle out of it so he could hunt quail. And uh, so there were cars, but it was very, very difficult to cross that terrain, for heaven's sakes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Anybody who's been to Big Lake would know that. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, we've but, all been to Big Lake. Well, uh, my family, it's sort of a pilgrimage, each succeeding generation. And uh, my granddaughter, Carlene Cromwell Alexander has not been there yet, but she will be there at some point to see her heritage. Right, well, they're actually doing a big celebration of the Santa Rita on July 1st. Yes, I understand that. And so they have this, this beautiful, to me, this is a story of perseverance. And to me, your grandfather is a hero, a huge hero. Oh yeah. But even more so in talking to you now, when I read about, you know, they were eating breakfast when the, when yeah. we, I didn't even think that there was a woman that cooked their breakfast. <laughs> yeah. My grandfather was there and she was, um, an amazing figure who went from teaching in Anadarko, Oklahoma, to being widowed at a very young age, yes. raising my mom on her own. And towards the end of her life, she was a master bridge player and she played bridge with Omar Sharif. No kidding. <laughs> One time in Dallas, she played Omar. She was a master bridge player, and she played with Omar Sharif. And one of the kind of interesting things, when my granddad got so interested in aviation, mm -hmm. um, he to kind of cause people to think aviation is cool, people should be willing to fly. My grandmother had a number of women from San Angelo go up in his plane and they played bridge. Oh no. 
<laughs> and I have a lot of, you know, clippings, the San Angelo Standard Times, if you do the history, you'll you'll see the clipping of, of the fact that they had a bridge game in the air because it was in the beginning of any notion of um, passenger airlines. And Cromwell Airlines ran from San Angelo to Big Springs to, I've forgotten, just a couple of little places. But they were trying to convince people that this is safe. You, it's okay to do this. And so she had a bridge, a, a, a bridge group that played as the plane flew. Isn't that <laughs> something? The woman behind the man. I'm just trying to think of what her day must have been like living in that shack. Yeah, with a baby and no other women around, only men. Exactly. And men that were willing to come out and they, I gather there was not a continuous crew. People came and went and uh, it was, a, it was a, a tough life, but she was a tough, persevering woman. There was no air conditioning, and Texas can get very hot. No. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. I mean, I, I keep thinking, I've been to Big Lake, and I've seen what's left of Texan. It, it actually grew yeah. to 10,000 people. They had their own baseball. Yeah, at one point. Now it's kind of deserted, but you still can see where the well was drilled. Yeah. They have a big thing there. Yeah. Yeah, the University of Texas, the land management people of the Texas land, they redid the well site a couple of years ago, I think. Isn't that something? So let yeah. us, so this is about your grandfather and the perseverance and your mother supporting him. I'm, My I'm, grandmother supporting him, yeah. A year and a half, a year and a half living in a shack with a brand new baby with a dream that was a dream it, sure it there was no guarantee that was just a dream and he never quit no and there's one story about the second will mm -hmm. the university well 1b where they told him to quit drilling because it was too dangerous to keep drilling and he kind of snuck around and persevered and drilled that one. And it was, for a long time, it was the deepest well that had ever been drilled. Yeah, for it, probably that record stood for five or six years, I think. Isn't that something? Isn't yeah. That, what a beautiful story. Your grandfather with the perseverance and never quitting. I also... You know, there were these little miracles and these little stories that go with the Santa Rita. Oh, yeah. The Catholic women who invested in it and they had their yeah. they had their priest bless, uh, bless a rose. Yeah. Gave those petals to Frank Pickerel, who climbed yeah. up the dirt and yeah. <laughs> was specifically told to Christian it the Santa Rita. And this Santa Rita, because she is the patron saint of impossible things. Impossible. <laughs> And then the the set of headlights that showed up right before midnight, when they had to have a witness, when they did yeah. get that hole in the ground, these little mirrors. Yeah. And I believe in every story or in every dream or in any project, Judy. If you see a miracle happen, stick with it. That's yeah. my my attitude. God's with you. God is yeah. with. You. But things happen in God time but the perseverance how many people most people would have quit and your your mother I mean she must have really loved him <laughs> well no that's my grandmother I my mean your mother, that's what I meant just, a, just an yes but yes I assume that that was very much the case that that she stayed at the well site all that time yes, and uh, and she probably cooked for the men and they probably all ate quail. <laughs> I think they, I think they ate a lot of quail. That's the story I remember. Oh. And uh, but I know that that was an exciting time for them. I'm sure and worthwhile. Yes. Well, we're very grateful for his perseverance. The state of Texas is, and I'm very honored and excited that I was able to talk to his granddaughter. Thank and you. And I, 
and I appreciate it. Anything that you have, send my way because I'm kind of putting together little tidbits about the story because it, it is the 100 year anniversary. Yeah, um, you might look at the poem that I sent. Oh, I, I, I took it out of this. It is the hokiest thing you've ever heard, <laughs> but it is, it, it's, it's interesting and it's of a piece. And um, I just, I both laughed and admired the poem uh -huh. because it's about the fact that the Santa Rita made the university possible and it, the the university growing, the University of Texas, and he hoped that the students were appreciative of that. And it was just kind of a fun thing for me. I, I had had that book around forever and ever and ever, and I appreciate the fact that you reached out to me because then I went back and found that poem, and uh, it is interesting, <laughs> to yeah. say the least. Well, Texas is celebrating the 100-year anniversary of the Santa Rita, which uh, did, has affected millions and millions and millions and millions of people because your grandfather never gave up. He did not give up. And I Thank love you. that. I love that. What a man. What a strong, strong man. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this, Judy. I appreciate you. And... I will be sharing this with everybody that I can. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Cindy. Bye-bye.